When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. Well done. Good morning, everybody. It is so good that we are able to gather here together in this space at this time. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, before any, I go any further, yes, I do understand that that would have sounded better with wine. <laughs> maybe for me, maybe for you, I'm not sure. That's coming. So, that song, I did my own little Lexio Divina on it, and two words popped out to me from that line in that song. If you know me, you can probably guess the first one was pizza. I know pizza. I've made a lot of pizzas. I've eaten even more pizzas. And I've come to realize over the years that the best pizza is actually pretty simple. The best pizza, the most popular pizza, it seems to be throughout the world, is the margarita pizza. The margarita pizza. Here's the recipe for the margarita pizza. You have a crust. You've got some tomato sauce. You've got some mozzarella cheese and some leaves of basil. That's it. A margarita pizza. Four simple ingredients. But when the ingredients are good, when the ingredients are really good, those four simple ingredients make an incredible pizza. The second word that came to me from the line in that song, amore. I think we could argue, I think I'd even agree, amore, love, even more important than pizza. Our readings today, I think, do a wonderful job teaching us about love, giving us, if you will, the recipe for how to spread God's love throughout the world. Not artificial love, not love that, or, or entertainment rather, let's say it that way, entertainment disguised as love. Not convenience that's disguised as love. True, authentic love is spoken about in our readings today. And the recipe is for us here, quite simple as far as the ingredient lists go as well. So the recipe for God's love taking over this world and for us recovering from the fall, from that separation from God, again, four simple ingredients. The first and foremost, Jesus Christ. The bread of life. The crust of the love pizza, if you will. I'm not going to go any further with that, I don't think. Jesus Christ. We hear it through the Gospels. We hear it through all of our readings. Jesus is the central focus, the key ingredient. <clears throat> Next, we hear Jesus talking to the disciples and saying, I need you to do something, but have faith. I will be with you until the end of time. I will be with you. Have faith faith. And I will send you help through the Holy Spirit. I will send you help. Have faith. Trust in me. The first ingredient to God's love taking over once again, Jesus Christ. The second, having faith and trust in Jesus. The last words that Jesus gave to his disciples and therefore to us, right? The last words he gave to them Go out and proclaim the good news. Don't just preach the good news, by the way. Proclaim the good news. The difference? Preaching words. Proclaiming words and actions and providing that sign to the world. He said his last words to them, go and proclaim to the ends of the earth, to all creatures, the good news. Jesus Christ having faith in Jesus Christ, proclaiming the good news. The first three steps in spreading that love, growing that love throughout the world. And the fourth comes 
a little bit later, we hear it in the second reading that we heard today, sounds like the Ephesians might not have been doing so well, so they got a letter. They got a letter. That same letter, by the way, I would argue is written to us as well. You are proclaiming the good news, I hear, but it is important to remember this. When you proclaim the good news, do it with humility. Do it with patience. Do it with love. All with an eye towards unity. How do you have a loving family if the family is not united, right? So the four ingredients to spreading God's love that we hear about today, Jesus Christ, having faith in Jesus Christ, proclaiming the good news with patience, humility, and love, working toward unity. Our mother church knows this very well. We get the opportunity to think about this specific recipe every week when we come to Mass. We proclaim our faith, right? We profess our faith in Jesus We say, I believe in Jesus Christ, who ascended into heaven. And let's take five seconds thinking about that. Ascended into heaven. Jesus Christ was standing in front of people one day, and he ascended into heaven. If that doesn't give you pause, if that doesn't give you that inspiration to have faith and to trust I pray it does soon. He ascended into heaven. So we profess that. Today we will be asked, do we believe that? And if we're on autopilot, we say, I do. If we're not on autopilot, and if we take a moment to pause and think about that, hopefully we'll still say, I do. But we will re-energize that thought within us. We are also presented with Jesus in the form of the Holy Eucharist, right? So when we are presented and and we hear body of Christ, we are claiming this is the body of Christ. If we're on autopilot, we just say amen. If we take a pause and think about what was just said to us, search our hearts, we still say amen. But we mean, I believe. So we have faith. And it's so important that the church asks us to remind ourselves about that every week. And then we are told at the end of Mass, go in peace. We are reminded again to go in peace. Wonderful reminders, important reminders, the key to spreading God's love throughout this world, right? For me, some of the best examples that we have today, outside of this one hour of Mass, right? Some of the best examples we have are moms. Moms give us a really good insight when, when done right. Moms show us selfless love. Moms are often working toward the unity of the family. Moms are teaching us right from wrong. Moms are a pretty darn good sign, a pretty good model of God's love when done right. But it's hard. It's hard. And dads, I would say this, for those of you who are dads, listen to this too. This message is for you too. I'm not preaching on Father's Day this year, so hear this message today. Also, please take note that because fathers, you got this message today, that doesn't mean that you have off on June 16th. Come to Mass. Get back here. But we are called as parents, right? As neighbors, as co-workers, as brothers and sisters in community. We are called to proclaim God's good news. Last words Jesus gave to his disciples, last words Jesus gave directly to us. Go and proclaim the good news. It's a challenge. It's hard. I'll give you two thoughts, though that I think most of you probably have heard in one way or another, or maybe even lived. One, society doesn't like that idea. Evil forces do not like that idea of us proclaiming Jesus Christ throughout our lives, throughout the world, right? This, my friends, is why we pray the St. Michael prayer. 
because we recognize that evil forces are working against us. And this idea, this idea that so many of us have grown up with, so many of us maybe have even said, let's not talk about religion and politics. I call bunk. No. No. That is an evil force working against Jesus. Don't believe that lie. Now again, humility, patience, working toward unity. But Jesus is to be proclaimed. The one I'm hearing more lately, working with young families, young parents especially, is I'm going to let my child choose. And oftentimes we're in a conversation about baptism or raising your kids in the faith, right? I'm going to let my child choose. And more often than not, that's code for, I'm not Really, we're not doing much. We're just going to let them choose. Now, free choice in and of itself, of course, not a bad thing. God has given us all free choice, right? But God also gave us teachings. God also gave us Jesus. Let's think about this, folks, in, in the terms that actually I understand even better. Let's think about taking our kids and running off to the best Mother's Day buffet that there is, right? Opening the doors, sending the kids in and saying, go ahead. Take whatever you want. Go ahead. How many salads are coming back to the table? (laughs) The brownies will be gone first, right? Now think about doing that every day. Kids, go ahead. So this this thought of I'm going to give my kids the opportunity to make their choice, that's coming from a loving place. I know that. But we have to teach them. We have to show them we care about them. And we have to model that we believe what we're, what we're saying as well. We have to proclaim. So today, our assignment, as we leave today, consider that recipe and consider how we are modeling, how we are proclaiming to the world that we, in fact, do believe in Jesus Christ. Let us proclaim that with our lives. Amen?